up, students? Welcome back to the Ugly Chairs podcast. We're so glad that you're here joining us today. My name is Joel, and I'm here today with two awesome friends. Drew, hello, podcast hello. regular. Uh, here I am. Back on the show again and uh, making her podcast debut with us, Drew. Caroline Brubaker. Hello. Woo. Good to be here. What's up? Finally Not got much. the best on the pod. Come oh on. My Come gosh. on. Welcome. No. Thank you. <laughs> glad yeah. to be here. No, glad to have you on. How are you guys doing? Good. Fantastic. Good. Great day. Yeah. Been a good day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Going fast. Awesome, y'all. Awesome. Well, hey, we're uh, diving in for these next couple episodes. We're going to be talking about uh, Easter, spiritual disciplines, a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, to get us kicked off and uh, started with our conversation, then I'd love to know um, what has been the thing that you've gotten most in trouble for when you were growing up as a kid? What was the thing that was like, you know, you just got most in trouble for a moment or maybe a reoccurring thing either way? Did you get in trouble a lot? Okay, so I'm gonna go first, and this okay. is just gonna, this is gonna, I don't know what you're about to say, but you can't beat mine. You really oh, can't. Oh, wow, okay. You can't beat mine. You okay? set the standard I've very set, high, Caroline. Like Come on. Mine, okay, so here's the thing I was not walking with Jesus in high school. Okay. Like, really, just like straying, um, was hanging out with bad crowd, mm -hmm. and that was like my lifestyle. Um, was with those said bad crowd mm -hmm. at a store, tried to steal something. Okay, I was at a store where they have people there that like it's their job to undercover, like walk around and make sure people aren't stealing. Like it's like a thing. What? And oh. it's at a it's at a mall. So yeah. don't try to don't ever try to steal yeah, one. Right, right, yeah. But like at a mall. <laughs> Disclaimer, just know, don't do this. <laughs> there's undercover people, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, do we need to so explain this, what a mall is? It's like a building <laughs> that had like stores in it that you could yeah, just go from yeah. store to store. So anyway, store the food court. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I take one step out of the store, immediately get caught by these undercover people. Yeah. yeah. Had to get taken back to this room. They call the police. Yeah, the police so come in. I got put in handcuffs. Yes. I got put in a oh cop car. Word. I got taken to a jail and had to sit in my a prison cell until my parents came and picked me up. Oh I even got like word. a mugshot, like the whole nine. Oh, yards. you have a mugshot. I have a mugshot. Oh, you're I don't tough, think it can girl. be found. Dude. I don't think it can be found. You can try. I was. Actually, I wasn't 18, so thankfully it was oh, like. Oh, sure, sure. I guess that might be part of it too. Because that was my yeah. next question. Like, do you have that like mugshot like printed out somewhere? And no, like, and like it's part of just somewhere. Yeah. I can assure you, I was like bawling my eyes out. So I'm sure there was like, uh, it's like it was probably like the typical yeah, mugshot, yeah, like sure. black, <laughs> like makeup running down my face. So yeah. So that was like that. That but. What's cool about that is God used that moment to change my life. That sure. was a rock bottom moment that he used to bring me to him. And it, it's an incredible story from there. But yeah. I know you can't top that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on, Drew, top I... that now. <laughs> Sorry. Don't have a mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Yeah. Thankful. Yeah. What I did probably deserved a mug shot. Uh -huh. I'm like thinking through the statute of limitations of like, this is on like, could I still be arrested for this? Because it was yeah. not great. Sure. I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and there was, like, nothing to do. Now Lancaster is, like, a little bit better. But back then, like, literally nothing to do. And there's just, like, huge water towers. That's, like, a thing. Yeah. I guess they store water in it. I don't know. But we were, like, let's hang out on top. Oh, of the, the water, water tower? tower? On a Friday <laughs> evening. And yeah. so they have, like, <gasps> fences with barbed wire and, like, all these signs. And so we're, like... Oh, let's make sure we plan ahead and mm -hmm. bring blankets to put over the barbed wire so that we can climb up like, and yeah. over. It was like we knew what we were doing was wrong yeah. and figured out ways to like get past it. Yeah. Climbed the water tower, sat up there and talked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like climbed back like down. Like looking back, it's like, like why? Why all that effort? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could have just sat on the ground and yeah, talked. Yeah. Yeah. And we it was like a group of like four guys. It was, you know, it was harmless but stupid and yeah. then i went home and somehow my mom found out because sharon knows everything uh, and here are the words sharon. that she spoke to my soul okay it will take a long time for you to regain my trust oh. and that's all she said <laughs> and i was and like, the like <gasps> the luck of the like soul left my oh. body yep. and i felt like yeah the worst human so yeah. not yeah. not great i shouldn't have done that yeah. but no mugshot <laughs> Hey. <laughs> maybe it maybe should have. I yeah. actually don't know. Like, I guess it might. Just, it would be like trespassing potentially. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, I mean, if definitely. you have to go over barbed wire. Yeah, that's, that's like trespassing. that's like the number one side. <laughs> but I guess I'm saying like I don't <laughs> know if there's anything else wire. that could be like added on top of that then too. But I like, mean, yeah. Yeah. if one of us fell, 
Oh, dude. Yeah, that's what I was like, why'd you do that? That's scary. That's scary. That's high up. Yeah, I know. Why did we do it? Because there was nothing else to do at Lancaster. (laughs) When we're like, let's talk. Let's get to the highest point and talk. Uh, It's so dumb. I wasn't even the highest point. That's fair. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, you just that. took all the well, coolness out of my story. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't put it in. Drew, Drew if it makes you a feel better, tower is probably not. Drew, if it makes you feel better, uh, <laughs> I can actually remember being a student too, actually contemplating the same thing with a group of friends. Then yeah. too. Well, so, I'm the uh, idiot that yeah. said yeah. yes. So. Yeah, well, just, it works out, y'all. It works out. <laughs> but um, so, so y'all, I ask you guys that question because um, as we're diving in, I want to talk about spiritual disciplines, and when we use that phrase, spiritual disciplines, it's uh, it's easy to kind of take that. Uh, last part of it, discipline, and think about maybe sometimes uh, or some of the times in our lives where we've done things wrong um, and we have to be disciplined for it. Um, But obviously there is a huge difference between um, that kind of discipline we're talking about and also what a spiritual discipline is as well. So can you guys just speak into that a little bit? Like what really, what is that difference between the two uses of the same word? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I think... uh, I've been pondering this question Mm -hmm. because I'm now a parent for the first time Mm -hmm. and we have a one-year-old and he's now at that spot of like, oh, he he disobeys, but he's one. And so how do we do that? And so even like looking back as me being a student or a kid and just being like, oh man, my parents, Mm -hmm. oh, they're so hard on me and like, oh, they just don't get it. But even realizing the thought and intentionality and teamwork that goes into parenting and figuring out, I don't know if what battles to pick, but it's, it's that like the consistency of Mm. correction and discipline is what makes the long-term effect. If that makes sense. And even just having the conversation with my wife when like our son Reese, just like, he's like throwing food right now. Mm -hmm. Like he throws a ball and we're like, my God, like, <laughs> high five, like let's go. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna be a professional athlete. <laughs> and then he throws food and we're like, no, the poor kid is probably yeah, like, like so, so confused. confused. Dude, five minutes ago, you just give me a high five for yeah. throwing a ball and yeah. I'd do the same thing. So it's just like, what's that consistency? Yeah, sure. How mm-hmm. are we doing it? Um, what words are we using? And I think it's yeah. the same thing, even just with our spiritual disciplines of like there's got to be some kind of consistency sure. that yeah. actually puts in the um, how the outcome that you want. Sure. Like, yeah. you know, and our outcome for disciplining Reese mm-hmm. is just obedience and just being like a kind human who mm-hmm. hopefully one day starts following Jesus. Yeah. Where for us as followers of Jesus with those disciplines, it's like, well, what's the outcome? Man, the closeness that we mm-hmm. have with Jesus, being more like him. Mm-hmm. Um, things like that, but I think it's that like consistency of that discipline mm-hmm. that actually leads us to like the good discipline, if that makes sense. So yeah. it, it's got to be different than like getting slapped on the hand. Yeah, sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so my mind went to my two year old too because we have a two year old and a eight month old, and Kip is he's in that he's same like he's he, well he's understanding now. So like that's nice. He well. It, Eh. Maybe. <laughs> it's not nice when he like purposely is doing things right, to like, yeah. yeah, get a reaction. Um, but okay, I feel like they're actually similar where it's like I discipline my son because I love him and I want to teach him and help him to understand sure. how to lead himself well. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I discipline him so that hopefully he can grow up and like just know and learn how to behave well and lead himself well. And I practice spiritual disciplines so that I can teach myself to lead myself well and to be more like Jesus and grow closer to him. And so I feel like they're they're different, but they're kind of the same in that way too. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And it's cool too, even you guys have that awesome perspective of being parents then too and getting to see like that side of it too. I know uh, Michaela and me are actually expecting our first kid Come in on. June. So, let's go, um, Come on. Awesome. Like, I'm excited to like, as like an upcoming parent, right? Being able to see like that side of it too. But um, even if you know, uh, you're know you not a parent too, like there's other things I think in our lives even um, outside of spiritual disciplines where we see that version of um, of the word kind of play out, like other disciplines that we have in our own lives as well. Is there any particular ones for y'all that are uh, just like, again, those like consistent habits or disciplines that you guys uh, have in your weekly rhythms that you do often? I'm terrible at being disciplined. <laughs> okay, all right. I appreciate the honesty, man. Yeah, it's, it's I, like, I would agree too. It's something I like really try to work on. I'm yeah. not goal-driven 
Okay. Like there are people that like wake up and like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna attack my goals. I'm yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I'm like happy that I like successfully made a cup of coffee that morning. <laughs> yeah, come like, on. Easy. <laughs> but I'm that. like love a challenge. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like good. And I'm like, people are like, oh, that's semantics. But if I'm like doing a mm-hmm. workout challenge, if someone's like, my goal is to be healthier and work out three days a week, uh-huh. I'm gonna do that for like a week. But yeah. if someone's like, here's a 90 day fitness challenge, I'm like, bet. And I'm okay. like, go hard at it. So I don't know why. So like, yeah. I have to like trick myself <laughs> into like being in a challenge. Huh, yeah. Either by myself or like with someone else, whether it's yeah. my wife or friends or whatever. Sure. There's that competitiveness that like makes me disciplined, but I don't wake out of, yeah. like, I don't wake up and be like, sure. the first thing you should do is make your bed because when you've successfully done one thing, the rest of your day set up, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to get back in it. Right. I don't take my shoes off and then tie them. Mm. That's ridiculous. That's how I view making wow. my bed. That's a good yeah. point. Wow. I've actually never that. thought that's of a that. Good before. <laughs> Come on now. But there's been so many studies of being like, that's the best discipline yeah. to have is make your or bed. Floss your teeth every day. Yeah. Oh, why, why do you guys <laughs> yeah, think that good, is though? Good, like, yeah, I, I hate so do that, John. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I've I couldn't tell you the last time I flossed, if I'm being really honest, right? Yeah. But Can like, I just like, say like, really quick about yeah. flossing? Oh, go for it. It's for so it. annoying because my husband, <laughs> I'm just, I'm calling, I'm also talking about my dental hygiene right now. So yeah. <laughs> like, I'm bad, I don't floss really, it's sure. bad. Um, my husband, Nick, never flosses, uh-huh. but he goes to the dentist and they just like rave about his, uh-huh. like, you must oh, floss so no. good, it's amazing. Nope. And then they're like, t- you don't floss. Like, you, and I'm <laughs> oh, no. like, yeah, no, I don't, but neither does my husband, so this is unfair. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I'm an anti-dentite because of that. I'm an anti-dentist. Can, can, because you say an anti-dentite? I'm an anti-dentite because I when you that. go, That's a word right there. you're like, okay, I haven't been for seven years. Yeah. I'm going to go. And then they mm. shame you. Oh, and you're like, so right. honey, I'm, I'm here doing my best. And Come I on. know yeah. I should be here every six months. Right. But I came in year seven. Yes. <laughs> I'm here now. I'm here now. Yeah, just be proud of Fix me. Yeah, but then they're like, no, please. but now your teeth are going to fall out when uh, you're like 30. So. And they'll be like, it's because you're an undisciplined person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It, all back. it all kind of comes back to that, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So, to answer your yeah, right. question. I don't know why I started talking about that, but yeah. disciplines. Yeah. Um, okay, I would echo that. Like, I am not a naturally disciplined mm. person, and I hate that feeling of like, it feels like failure when you're like, you mm. try yeah. and then yeah. you don't, and it's just like not a good feeling because I want to be yeah. disciplined. I want to be, mm. um, but it's something that like, it's, I have to work for that, and yeah. I keep failing over and over again. But I like that mindset of like, maybe just like call it a challenge, challenge. yeah, and like take it one day at a time. Um, but clearly I'm not good at flossing when it comes to this one, but, um, I, um, something I'm trying to do now, like a new discipline is just waking up before my kids. Cause I'm mm. not disciplined. I'm one to like wake up with my kids cause they wake up really early. Yeah. But now I'm like, I gotta to have un- uninterrupted time with God. Like yeah. I gotta get up before them or else I'll have it. But it's like not much is happening there sure. because my kids are interrupting me every two seconds. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I, that makes sense. Yeah, I think working out has been one for me personally. That's been like super intimate because like you can get super excited about doing it for like, oh, like I just want to do something to be active for like the day, mm-hmm. at least in my world, right? Like, I love just like try, if I'm been like lazy for the day, like I want to go do something and be active. Um, but like actually building a consistent rhythm of doing that, again, it's just like one, like I echo what you guys are saying too. It's just hard to be disciplined like that then too. But yeah. um Kind of off of that, though, and I actually I like the the way that we're thinking about our own view of um, disciplines outside of spiritual disciplines, because I think in some ways, um, if we're not careful, we can allow some of that to even creep into how we're um, doing our own spiritual disciplines uh, in our own lives, too. But maybe it's just kind of a a, a little bit more of a foundation for that than too. Um, how would y'all define what a spiritual discipline is to someone? And then maybe what are some of those that um, you try to do in your life to uh, and build a rhythm of doing um, in your in your daily life then too? That's great. Yeah. I would just say they're just habits that you do to draw closer to God and to grow mm-hmm. in your relationship with God. So habits you create in your life. So for me, I feel like these are the cliche ones and everyone's probably expecting this answer, but it's prayer and reading your Bible. Sure. And they're cliche, but they're so important. Like mm-hmm. that is how we grow in our relationship with God through hearing him through his word and talking to him like we would talk to a friend. And just like we grow in our relationships with each other when we talk and we get to know each other, like it's the same thing mm-hmm. with God. So. 
for me, um, like I said, it's hard for me to be disciplined and get up before my kids to make sure I have that time. But I would just say if you're in a season of struggling with like just doing that at all, like don't make these like enormous goals for yourself of like, I'm going to read through the whole Bible this year and like yeah. I'm going to be disciplined this year and do that. Or I'm going to even read through a whole book. Like if you're struggling, maybe just start with a devotional that's like a one page devotional. And it's like a realistic thing for you to do every morning because it's short and it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Make sure it has scripture in there. Make sure it has biblical truth. Yeah. But just starting there, I think, and then building on that from yeah. there can be really helpful And when you're in those seasons where you're just like, it's not happening. Sure. It's, it's really funny that in all phases of life, we know you have to do certain things to achieve an outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a basketball player, mm -hmm. you're not going to wake up one day and be like, I'm the greatest basketball player ever to walk the face of the earth. It's yeah. like, no, there's like things you have to do and drills you have to do and, and uh, progression. Mm -hmm. You know, day one, you're not going to be as good as you are day 20 yeah. or 100 or 1,000. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, we just like completely ignore yeah. the cause and effect world we live in mm -hmm. and don't apply that to our spiritual walk or relationship with Jesus at all. And yeah. it's like, what? it shouldn't be any different of like, if I want to have a close relationship with Jesus, there's just certain steps that we do. Yeah. Like, I would not have a good relationship with my wife if I don't talk with her. Mm -hmm. Like, how can I expect to have a healthy marriage sure. if I'm not listening to her? Mm -hmm. Why is that not, mm -hmm. why is that not the same thing with Jesus? It is, is <laughs> I need to be talking with him and I need to be listening to what he says. And he's spoken to us through his word. And so, like, you just need to spend time with them. That's yeah. how you get to know someone. That's how you build a relationship. And so I don't know why we disconnect our spiritual lives from the rest of life because the way that God has set it up is for us to understand mm. the relationship we have with him by giving us relationships with one another Yeah. so that we can know how to have a better relationship with him. So I think yeah. it's just one of those ones of, like, stop thinking that it's just entirely different. It may be different because of how high of a priority it should be. Yeah. And the fact that you get to talk to the creator of the universe, like that's, my wife is great. She didn't create the universe. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> but not going to have that relationship with someone who did yeah, uh, sure, and yeah. loves me and is alive and active and can change the outcome of my future and all those kind of things. And sure, yeah. I'm just expecting to have a good relationship with him. It's yeah. like, no, bozo. Like, no, it takes time. It takes getting to know him and knowing his heart and him changing my heart to become more like his. And it, just, it takes time. And that's okay. Yeah. I love how you said, like, the relationships that we have here on earth are the example of what it should be like with Jesus. Because I think the reason it's so hard that we don't get it, like, why why don't we see that we need that with Jesus, too, is because he's not physically here. Yeah. Like, he's not, yeah. we can't, like, I can't talk to him yeah. like I'm talking to you right now. But that's such a good point of, like, using that example of, like, well, pretend like he is. Like, yeah. pretend like, treat it like it's mm -hmm. your significant other or your friend. That's so good. I think that's so helpful. Yeah, totally. And, and I think both of you guys are starting to hit on this a little bit, but um, I know, like, I definitely wrestled with this when I was a student, and I'm sure we have students watching who um, wrestle through this idea as well, too. Like, we get really excited when we talk about this idea of spiritual disciplines, right? And, like, we're all bought in, and we want to, like, start building in that discipline, right? But I also think there's that curve of, like, hey, um, nothing really feels like it's changing yet, mm -hmm. right? Like, the things I'm praying for um, haven't, like, worked out the way I thought they were going to, or, like, I don't feel like I'm like any closer to Jesus than I was before I was doing it too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can you guys just speak into that a little bit? Like, like, Hey, if there's a student that's maybe experiencing some of that, like disconnect between like how spiritual disciplines are actually growing mm -hmm. us. Um, and we're like, where does that truly come out of then too along the way? Yeah, that's good. So I grew up playing sports and like soccer and basketball all throughout, like through college. And I, so there's always preseason, right? Where it's like not the season yet. Mm -hmm. And you're like on the grind. It's like two a days, three a days, just like practice, practice, practice. And when you're in that, it's not fun and it's hard. And you're like wondering if this is like worth, like, is this doing anything? Mm -hmm. Is this practice like going to make a difference? Like you just don't know because you haven't played any games yet. Yeah. And then you get to your season and it's game time. And you can physically feel like, oh, all that was worth it. Like, I'm I'm tired now. What if I didn't do all that ahead right. of time? Like, thank goodness I did. And you can, like, physically feel that it, all along it was you were putting in the practice and that was doing something. So I think about it in the same way in, like, having those, ha those daily habits, those spiritual disciplines. Like, there's so many times where I do that. I spend time with God. I pray. And I just, like, don't feel anything. I'm just, like all right, God, I'm like trying to hear from you, but I'm not really hearing much. I'm not, not much is going on during this prayer, during whatever I'm reading in the Bible. And then like a storm of life will hit and I'm like, wow, 
like God was preparing me then when I didn't, I didn't feel it at all. Yeah. And so if you can have that mindset of like, when you're in a season where it's just like, I'm not, I feel like you're not here, God, mm -hmm. like God is always preparing you for what's to come. Yeah. And so just like trust the process, like another sports saying, sure. um, but like in that grind time, like in the, like, just, you know, seasons of like not much happening, like God's doing something. And so just keep faking it till you make it, like keep going, even if you're not feeling the results or experiencing like that super high feeling yeah. closeness with God. Mm, sure. Yeah. And I've been there. Mm. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I've got it all figured out. Yeah. But I think that there's this like tension mm. that as a follower of Jesus, we have to live in when it comes to relationship. And I think sometimes we think, but I've been doing those things. Mm. Man, I've I'm reading my Bible, I'm checking off the list, I'm praying, I'm, I'm doing all the right things. And I think mm. if you've been following Jesus for a long time, I'd almost want to look at you and just be like, just stop it. Yeah. Like, stop. Because since when in our relationship do we pursue God? And whenever we look at scripture, God is the one who pursues us. Mm. And I wonder if you just need to like stop <laughs> and be like, what, what am I chasing? Mm. I don't need to chase, he's right here. Have I listened? Mm -hmm. Am I like grinding and doing all this work, but I'm completely neglecting a God who pursued us to the fact that he like mm -hmm. took on flesh, became one of us, dwelled with us for 33 years, died for us, rose victorious over sin and death, mm -hmm. gave us new life in his spirit, and now he's dwelling. And like, how have we neglected all of that? Mm -hmm. Have you just like slowed down and recognized the love and grace you have sitting inside of you? In connecting with that so it's this weird tension of like man it's important to read your Bible and pray and go to church and do all these things mm -hmm. but man if it starts becoming a checklist and you're like I was feeling it and now I'm not it may be like well maybe because you're not feeling it is because you're just like doing 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 check 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 and it's like that's not a relationship it would be weird yeah, with my wife it's like oh talk to her today check yeah <laughs> it's right. like I don't yeah. need to talk to her for the rest of the day <clears throat> done that's super weird and then you ignore, like, no, that, that's not how relationships work. And so what are those moments where you're like, I'm, I'm going to allow myself to be pursued by him because he has already pursued us. So sure, it, yeah. it's yeah, a tension. That, that doesn't yeah. mean that, like, hey, I never have to read my Bible again, never have to go to church again. No, 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 no. There's important things you should be doing. But when doing becomes more important than relationship, we need to sit back and be like, I just need to be pursued by God. Yeah, that's so good. Can I add to that too? So I want to say too, like, yes, again, <coughs> read your Bible, pray, like those are so important. But also like God created us all very differently. We're all wired differently. We all connect with God differently. Yeah. And so like I, for me, a spiritual discipline that I do, not all the time, but try to do this every so often more when it's like warmer out, is I'll go and just like be outside because I feel like nature is the way that I feel like I connect with God. And I love worship music and I'll just go on a walk and listen to worship music and just kind of like talk to God through the lyrics of the song. Like yeah. not out loud. People would think I'm pretty weird. I'm just <laughs> walking on the street talking a lot to myself. But yeah. and that's for me is a spiritual discipline because it's it's how I connect with God. And I'm, it's like I'm being still with God. And it's like mm -hmm. speaking to what you're saying, like mm -hmm. if you were like if you're going to talk to your wife, but it didn't feel like there was connection there, like that's not a win. Mm -hmm. But if I'm like, feel like I'm connecting with God and drawing closer to him because I did it in a way that I feel like I connect with him, mm -hmm. like that's the point. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of what you're saying. Like, what's it for you? Mm -hmm. um, because everyone connects with God differently. Like yeah. find that thing that's for you. Maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's going on worship prayer walks like I do or whatever. Like find that thing that's how God wired you to connect with him. Yeah. And, and I'd probably ask that student of like, Maybe there's a spiritual discipline that you haven't pursued or thought about. Yeah. And maybe you're starting to think your relationship is all about you. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm not feeling it. I'm not. Yeah. And it's like, oh, maybe you're now to a point in maturity that you need to start thinking about other people. Even mm -hmm. in your relationship with Jesus, your next step in growth mm -hmm. is to serve other people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see your connection with God grow so much when you start mm -hmm moving into those thoughts of yeah. it's not just about me. So yeah. I think That's there's gold, even some bro. other yeah. spiritual disciplines, even outside of reading your Bible and praying that yeah. a mature follower of Jesus is ready for that they just maybe haven't done yet. Yeah, sure. that's so true. Yeah. So maybe actually just a great way for us to close out uh, uh, for this episode here. I think maybe it's just kind of going off of what you guys are saying there too, right? So maybe think through the lens, we can be thinking through the lens of like, um, 
a student who uh, maybe be, maybe it's just totally brand new to spiritual disciplines, mm -hmm. or uh, or in addition to that, we can be thinking through a student who maybe has been doing dis spiritual disciplines before and maybe has some of that like hesitation or um, uh, has has tried before and hasn't really feel like it's been growing their relationship too. How would y'all encourage them to to engage with spiritual disciplines? Is there one in particular? It's like hey. Uh, maybe try this one out and, and start thinking through um, how this one can help grow your relationship with God into and like just overall like what are, is any advice that you would give to a student who's trying to like think through how spiritual disciplines can be a part of their life again as a um, as a result of just getting a chance to hear um, what y'all are saying today then too. Yeah. yeah I would say a good one to start with is prayer yeah. and try like generally as we keep saying like talk to God like you would talk to a friend or someone in your life yeah. and like do that all throughout the day. So like for me, all throughout my work day, I wish I could just call my husband Nick like so many times just to like tell him about something cool that happened or like yeah. vent him about something not cool that happened or like tell him about the thing I'm freaking out about. And what I've realized over time is like, I can do that with God. Like he, like I have access to him at all times at any time. And when I do that in my prayer life, just talk to God all throughout my day, that makes me feel so much closer to him than just like once a day or before bed or before a meal or whatever. Um, and so just making it like a, treating it truly like a relationship with prayer. And I call them like breath prayers. I don't know if you've heard that before, but it's just like to yourself, like in a breath, in a sentence, like in your head quietly, just like Say something to him and just start there. That's good. Yeah, yeah man, I, I think it's all individual. Mm. And there's like general practices, but even just figuring out where a student is and their walk with Jesus, I think is huge. And then like, not that it's all about enjoyment, but there is something so beautiful about mm. the relations that we get to have with Jesus and recognizing the life abundant that we get to have in that relationship. Yeah. And if you are like begrudgingly going to that relationship, you're not going to see growth happen because your heart attitude is not right. Like, yeah, yeah. Totally. man, Good. and we've probably had that friend of like, Hey, we were really close and now we just hang out. Cause I feel like an obligation. Mm. It's like that relationship is never going to be a healthy relationship until you stop feeling obligated to hang out with that person. Right. It's the same thing with God. Like yeah. stop, stop with the obligation stuff. Start with the, like, why do you want a relationship with God? because he wants to have a relationship with you. And when you start recognizing that like the God of the universe wants to have a relationship with you yeah. man, that there should be some motivation there. And I would say prayer and reading your Bible. Again, those two feel cliche because they are necessary for anyone who's following yeah. a relationship with Jesus, no matter if they've been following him for 37 minutes or 87 years, you know what yeah. I mean? Like those two things are just so important. So mm -hmm. those two always, but just figuring out like, what does that look like? What, what's going to bring you joy in that relationship? Can I even add to that real quick too? I think in some ways, like uh, we have maybe like a mindset or a mental picture of what prayer and reading your Bible looks like. Um, if I was going to tell you like what the stereotypical like view of it would be, it's like, oh yeah, like I'm locking myself in my room, like, and yeah. just like, you know, for whatever reason, I'm imagining like the lights are like lower or whatever reason. It's just like, I was like, all right, it's like no distractions, nothing going on, do that. But like, I also love Caroline, how you even just had the example of just like going out and being in nature. Like you could, you can do prayer and you can yeah. read your Bible, even as like, as, as baseline spiritual disciplines, you can do those in a number of different ways yeah. then too. So like find the way that you actually enjoy doing the spiritual discipline too. Yes. Like sometimes I could even be part of the battle then too yeah. um, and get creative with it then too. Again, yeah. kind of goes back to the, like have fun and actually have enjoyment in it then too. Cause yeah. it's uh, cause God wants like, that. Like he wants you to enjoy it. He yeah. doesn't want it to be this thing that you're like, Oh yeah. So. <laughs> oh, I had to pray today. <laughs> yeah. Like no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Y'all thanks for being here. Thanks for starting up this conversation. Uh, next time we'll continue to dive into prayer a little bit more and also get a chance to talk about Easter some and, uh, we'll see you guys there uh, to join us for that then too. So, see you then.